Hello, I'm Billy Joe Sazu, high school and middle school educator for Lower Bill Research. Welcome to our 2020 prototype showcase. Uh, the students have worked the last two months on a product they call the Indigi Smartwatch. Um, they designed it to help combat the alarming number of missing and murdered, murdered indigenous women. Um, how it would work is that it would send out an alert to family members who in turn could use to help uh, law enforcement track down people using their GPS coordinates. Um, and the following uh, will be students presenting the science behind the product. On the right side of the screen is a chat room. Feel free to post any questions or comments, feedback that you may have, and please stay tuned at the end of the presentation for the question and answering session. Thank you and enjoy the presentation. Hi, my name is Isabel Estes, and I'm here today to introduce you to our team. Our team is a group of 14 male and female interns that range from 7th through 12th graders who all share the common goal of creating change. Our team was brought together through a local nonprofit known as the Laura Rural Research Program in order to create some type of project that would impact the Laura Rural Reservation in a positive way. Beings as all of us either currently reside on the Laura Rural Reservation or in surrounding areas and are either Native American or have some sort of close connection with indigenous people. Um, these factors heavily influenced the design and the make of the Indigi smartwatch, being says all of us felt that it was important to us to incorporate Lakota culture and to represent indigenous people in a positive light. Which is why we designed the smartwatch to be a technological solution that could possibly lessen the numbers of missing and murdered indigenous women beings as the movement is something that we all hold close to our hearts. Um, none of this would have been done if it weren't for three special members slash mentors of our team who were there from start to finish and made sure that they gave us the best advice, made sure we had tons of fun and laughter, and most importantly, made sure we stayed on track. So I just wanna give a big thank you to Devin Ryder, to Sheena McBride, and Billy Joe Sazu. And also, thank you for listening to my part of the presentation. Hi, I'm Heavenly, and today I'm going to be showing you what I've been working on. Um, it's called the button, and we should be able to press on the button after you put everything together. And once you press on the button, the electricity should flow through and turn that LED light on. If you let go of the button, the LED light should turn off. But to show you what I just said, this is what I mean. Is when you turn this, it should turn on. And when you let go of the button, it should turn off. Because when you let go of the button, the electricity stops flowing through. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jasmine. In this video, I will be talking about the GPS module. During this internship, I learned a lot about the GPS module. Um, once I got it wired up, I wanted to learn like more about it and like how it worked. Um, and this is the GPS module. This is the Arduino, and this is the little tiny GPS thing. It's blinking because it is reading my uh, coordinates to tell where I am. Um, in order for it to do what you want it to do, such as tell your location, um, you would have to wire it up right and also um, complete the coding right. And this is basically, um, hold on. Um, where you see it go from zero, that's because um, it wasn't able to connect with the other satellites to get my location. But with these numbers right here, this is my location as of right now. This is my coordinates of where my GPS module is of right now. Oh, as some of you guys may ask how it works. Well, a GPS is a system of 30 plus navigation satellites circling Earth. Um, 
we know where they are because they constantly send out signals. Uh, a GPS receiver in our phone listens for those signals. Once the receiver calculates its distance from four or more satellites, which that's why I said four, uh, it was connecting with the four satellites, uh, it can figure out where you are. Hello, and my name is Tasia, and I'm part of the Lorbo Research Community. I'm here to inform you about the LCD screen. It is a liquid crystal display. It is a flat panel display or electronically modulated optical device that uses light modulating properties of liquid crystals combined with polarizers. <clears throat> this is what it looks like. I don't have it wired up right now, but this is what it looks like. So you can put anything on this. You can put anything on it. Um, any words on it, like an email received or uh, GPS mo um, coordinates, all of that. It does all of it, and this is what it is. And yeah, I mean, I, that's about it. I'll have to say. So yeah. Hi, I'm Lacosta Bington. I'm. 15 years old and I'm going to be a sophomore. Um, here I have the real-time clock module that we are using in our technology. The back side above. Um, a real-time climb is a real-time clock is a computer clock that keeps track of the current time through a device such as a watch. Although the term often refers to devices and personal computers, servers, and embedded system, real-time clocks are present in almost any electronic device, which keeps accurate time. Um, I think that we use this technology, or we do use this technology more than ever. It is really a core technology um, that kind of goes unsurfaced. Um, in the bottom right corner, you can see that I have inserted a diagram of how we wired it to the motherboard Arduino Uno, which supplies the power and connects everything and runs it smoothly. Um, here, if it's wired connect correctly and we have a LCD screen or another piece of technology which we can present the time and date on it with the correct wiring and the correct coding we can present the real accurate time and date onto an LCD screen or another type of screen we use. Um, and with this technology, I personally connected it to an LCD screen. And I think the hardest part when using it was the, the coding had to be the hardest part because you know there's different types of mess ups that you can do in coding and coding is another core technology which one of my teammates will be talking about um, or has talked about. But the real time clock module is a big part of in our technology that we're making. Um, you know, as you can tell, we're making a watch, the watch of tomorrow, which I mean, what is a watch without the time and date? Hi, my name is Martina and I'm part of the lower bill research. We made a modified Fitbit smartwatch using Arduino Uno platform. One of the new features we included was the distress button. When this is triggered, it sends an alert message sending the person's coordinates through an email using Wi-Fi. With this extra feature on the watch, a call for help can be sent at a moment's notice and personal safety becomes handy in a gadget like this. Hi, my name is Lucea, and I'll be showing you Indigi's heart rate monitor. Um, this is the heart rate monitor. This is what it looks like. And when how you use it is you just put your finger on this front part right here for a couple of seconds, and it should read your heart rate. This um, heart rate monitor will be on Indigi's prototype. So this heart rate monitor is called the max 30102 and how it takes your heart rate is it uses this method called photoplethysmography and how that works is it uses an infrared light in this little um, 
screen right here. So when you put your uh, finger on it, the infrared light shines on your skin and is able to measure your blood through that, thus telling you your heart rate when you put your finger on it. So this is just uh, another cool feature that will be on the watch for you to use whenever you'd like. My name is uh, Shane Grail, and today I'll be talking about the summer research project and also just some of the stuff I've been working on for, for that project. So I've been working on the exterior design part uh, for our final project, our, of our final project. And um, with the exterior design, uh, we used many different uh, designs and uh, drawings, 3D prints made by me and other students as well to actually <clears throat> come up with our final design for our product. So here I have some other drawings and designs that I've made myself. And on there, it has um, some of the watch features and functions of the watch or that the watch has. So um, just to show you here. Uh, can't see, can't see, can't see. Here, this picture here is just some of the drawings I had and, you know, designs that um, I drew, drew up. And uh, yeah, some, just some of that was implemented into the final design. So we used it to come up with the final, uh, final, uh, design and uh although we weren't able to actually build our prototype uh my teacher and i created a little 3d design of what the watch may have looked like or would have looked like and uh some of the functions it has and does so with the with the 3d print here um it doesn't really look like a watch but it's just something to show and demonstrate of what the watch would have looked like so the LCD screen would have displayed your time and date, uh, your heart rate, as well as your body temp and sugar levels, and um, by the press of a button. And um, with that, the name of our product is on the watch, Indigy. Hi, I'm Desi. I'm 15, going to be a sophomore this year. And I'm going to be talking about computer coding. But first, let me show you some of the apps that we use, and I'll show you the how we use the Archer one. So the first app I'm going to show you is GitHub. And as you can see, I kind of copied it already. Then another app that we use is called the Arduino Editor, or Create Arduino. And then we usually press this. I really have nothing on my Arduino right now. But we press this right here, and then it goes right into our Arduino. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about our Arduino and our board. So this is how it looks. As you see, I really don't have anything on it. Let's take it off. So this helps us transfer it into this. And we have like a lot of things on here. But I don't because I put everything away. Well, I put it away. And then we get it to work. If it doesn't work, then we have to try to create new ideas or something better to get our answers. And yeah, I think it's pretty much it. Cell phones have a receiver and a transmitter. Within a cell phone, there are radio waves, which allow for the receiver of a message to accept messages. The device we are working with, the Arduino Wi-Fi module ESP8266, allows this process to happen using SMS. The code used with the Arduino Wi-Fi module and GPS module will send data to a Google Sheet. Using that code will allow a message to be sent to a cell phone. It's the same process as a regular text message. The signals that are used to make phone calls, send data, or text 
are sent and received from the nearest cell tower. For example, if I were to send a text to my parents, the signal would be sent from the cell tower closest to me. The text message would be received from my parents from the nearest cell tower closest to them. When this text message is written, it is written in a code. This code is then transmitted into a signal that is specified for the user. This code or signal will then be sent to the receiver. Overall, the device we are using is similar to a phone sending a text message. Hey, my name is TJ, and I'll be explaining to you how I personally designed a website over these last couple weeks of summer. Okay. okay, as you can see, this is the website I have designed over this these past last weeks. And right here is a home page where we where you can see all the links to the original projects we've been working out working on. And this link right here is to the official site of the Lord Bear Research Team. And the next page is just meet the team, meet the teachers, and then here's a list of all the inventors right here. And then I personally added this this uh, this summer's online learning experience. I had to deal with COVID-19 and all that. And here is all the people who support our projects. And the next uh, page is a project projects page. And here is an old design. This was last year's design, our project we came up with, and this is this year's project. And the last and final page is support us where people can donate if they want to, to our nonprofit organization. And that, and that is all I wanted to share with you guys for this uh, video. Hi guys, my name is Leah, and I am working with the Lower Brew Research this summer on a modified Fitbit that is called the Indigi, that is the watch for tomorrow. And uh, for this watch in this summer, I studied intellectual property for the watch, and intellectual property is a category of property that includes intangible creations of human intellect. There are different parts to intellectual property, and these parts are the copyrights, patents, trademarks, and trade secrets. And for our intellectual property, I focused on the patents. And for the patents, I filled out a patent application that if we were to create multiple watches, it will have our name and logo on it, giving us the rights to this product in the design so no one can claim it for their own. So this helps us to claim any money that this product produces. And the application also helps to show the public all the technical information so people can give us feedback and solutions to any problems that we may have with the watch. And it can also uh, just show you how the watch all works and all the processes that it went through to uh, build this watch. And it really just gives you a nice idea of how it works. Right here is the patent application and it has all our names on it. It tells you the purpose of the invention and all the problems and all the technology that went into it. And it just kind of gives you a nice idea of how this whole process works. And it really just kind of gives you like, just like how much work we really put into this uh, watch over the summer. It took us almost two months to get it all together. So I kind of just wanted to tell you that intellectual property is the one of the main things that goes into finishing up the product. And I did this so we can be able to patent it and sell it, maybe hopefully make some money off of it so we can show that we work very hard and that this is just great experience for all of us and we really kind of just worked hard to get it together so that's intellectual property so this is indigi's prototype um right here is the gps module the wi-fi module and the clock module and the 
heart rate module right here. And this is the LCD screen display. As you can see, the date and time is on there. Um, so if I press this button here and put my finger on the heart rate module, my heart rate will show up on that LCD screen. Uh, now I just gotta click this button and it will go back. Okay, now um, the Wi-Fi module, when, once I press this button, the Wi-Fi module will take the GPS information and send to a phone. Let's see, got a message. And here's the coordinates. Hi, my name is Mackenzie. Today I'm sharing with you projects we may be able to do in the future. Um, now most of these projects we've already talked about at the beginning of the summer program, and they're all really great ideas. Um, one of the things we talked about is a laundromat for homeless people. Um, not only so they could wash their clothes, of course, but they could also have somewhere to use the bathroom or to have AC in the hot weather or um, heating in the colder weathers. Um, another project we talked about is a homeless shelter. Um, so a lot in our community, we have a lot of people who are homeless. Um, so not only would it help with um, housing, um, but it can also help with job trainings. Um, if they're going into full employment, they can have assistance with that, um, especially with people who have disabilities that are homeless. Um, and if they're addicted, they can get counseling. Um, another project we talked about doing was fixing the erosion by the bend. Um, whether we stop or reduce the erosion is good. Um, it's affecting wildlife, um, public and private property, and it also contributes to pollution.